Hello, my name is Callie Chappelle, and thank you for tuning in to this video, How to Prep a DA. This is a video that's part of my series of videos, part of the Novice Go by Win series, teaching novice debaters how to do policy debate. So first, an introduction. My name is Callie Chappelle. I'm a debater for the University of Michigan. I debated at Traverse City Central High School, and I currently coach for Go Over Prep. I am a 2 and one a and fun fact about me is I prep files in my free time. I love prepping files. So welcome. Here's a quick introduction. So to make the most out of this video, you should definitely take notes and you should rewatch bits that you need re-explained. Hopefully we'll have worksheets and or supplemental materials that will go along with the video, so check in the video description to see if that's there. Next, don't worry about it. You don't need to memorize all of this, but you should be at least familiar with everything in the video because it's a building process. And finally, your coach may like things differently, or you may debate in a different style, or you may like to prep files totally differently. That's totally okay. This is just one starting point, not an end point. One time, a new tier debater told me that I prep files really weird, so this is especially something that you need to do personally. So you may like to prep files completely differently. This is just what works for me, and I'm teaching you that. But if you think that you want to do it a different way, I definitely encourage you to figure out what works best. Because ultimately, a best prep file is one where you can find all the evidence and you know the evidence really well. So preparation and debate. So in debate, you win arguments if you respond to all of your opponent's arguments. So what do you know that your opponents are going to say? Or how do you know what your opponents are going to say? Well, you have to prepare files with the most possible answers to all the possible things your opponents could say. Wow, that sounds like a lot of work, but it's actually not when you get the hang of it. And I'll teach you how to prep a file. So what does a prep file look like? Well, let's take a look at what a prep file should look like using the spending DA. So there's a couple of key components that we'll talk about. First is a pre-written overview. Next are extensions, which are pre-written explanations of key cards. Um, all the cards should be mostly highlighted in an organized structure. And most importantly, you should know where everything is. It doesn't matter if you know it's not 100% perfect, but as long as you know where everything is, that's what matters. So let's check out the main components of the spending DA file now. Now, before I do this, I'm going to assume that you know quite a bit about DAs, so how to extend a DA, the parts of a DA, etc. If you are not clear about these things, then you should definitely go back and rewatch the intro to DAs videos, especially parts 1 and 2, to get the hang of it. You should even watch part 3, which is app answers, so you can get a better feel of what kind of answers that we need to be prepared for, and also how to better craft uh, extensions based on what we think those answers are going to be. So here are the parts of a, a prep DA file. Well, let's just take a look really quick. I'm going to exit out of PowerPoint and go to the spending DA, okay? So here's the spending DA. You can see I'm going to extend this. Uh, just the key parts of verbatim, just in case you forgot. So this is a hat. So this is the biggest part here, and you can see the hats here. Here is the 1 and C spending DA. So this is a hat. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, this is a hat. I'm sorry. This is a pocket. This big one's a pocket. Um, and then here's a tag, and here's a site. Okay, so you can see that we want to have our navigation pane, which we have this part checked on verbatim. If you don't have verbatim, uh, you should absolutely download it to make sure that you can or, um, organize it. And I'm just going to show you the main parts here. We're going to go into each part in detail in a second. So here's the 1 and C, right? So 1 and C spending DA. Now, let's say I was actually making a 1 and C. So I go to speech. I go to 1 and C. Uh, practice. Okay. I just save it wherever. Now, if you were actually in a, in a debate, you should save it in a very special folder. So let's say I'm trying to make a 1 and C. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this, the hat, and then I'm going to hit the tilde key. So just in real life, the tilde looks like this. Okay, um, but I'm going to hit the hat, and then I'm going to hit the tilde key. And then what that's going to do is it's going to send this to my 1 and C practice. Look, so when I switch, here's the actual spending DA, and here's the practice, and there it is. It already sent it. So that's so easy. Instead of having to highlight all of these cards and copy and paste, right? Ugh, it takes so long. Copy, and then paste. All you have to do is hit the tilde key, okay? So we 1 and C. Oh, also, if this is an actual 1 and C, we don't want to we don't tell the other team what this is. So I'm just going to say, instead of 1 and C spending DA, I'm just going to write 1 and C DA, okay? So here's the 1 and C. And then here are 1 and R mechanics. So 1 and R, since we split the block, if you don't remember what splitting the block is, go back and watch the DA's videos, also the um, structure of debate and slash big neg videos on mechanics. So uh, this could easily be the 2 and C if you're sending the spending DA the 2 and C. Um, but usually I like to have the spending DA set into 1 and R. Uh, so you can just think about this as 2 and C slash 1 and R mechanics. Um, so here are the parts that we're going to talk about. So we need an impact overview, we need a uniqueness block, we need a link block right here, we need an impact block, and then I always like to have an extra uh, impact module here, okay? 
also. So the next part is econ turns case. So the terminal impact on the spending DA is the economy. So I like to have a really big turns case section. Um, and we're going to talk about this more in detail in a second. Uh, I like to have here are just more uniqueness cards, answers to uniqueness arguments. And here's a section of links. So here are answers to link arguments. Okay. And then let's see. So I'm going to close that. Here's internal links. So answers to different internal link arguments. Um, and then here's impact. So here, like more impact works here. Okay. So there's a big idea. We're going to go in each in depth on each of those. Okay. So let's go back to this. So parts of a prep DA file we're going to talk about. So first is the impact overview. So that's a one to two sentence explanation of the DA. So that's the uniqueness link and impact. Then comes the impact calc. So that's where you do magnitude, uh, magnitude time frame, and probability. If you have any questions about how to do impact calc, you should go back and watch the impact calc video. Uh, and then third is how the impact turns case. So this is how the DA impact caused each app impact to happen. So for example, if the app, if the DA impact is economic collapse and the app impact is warming, the, the DA would turn its case by saying an economic collapse causes warming because people will just use cheaper oil rather than investing in cleaner energy technology. So obviously there are a lot of ways that the DA could turn its case, but this is just one example. Okay, so let's look at an impact overview now. So I'm going to go to the spending DA and I'm going to go to my impact overview. Okay, so here it is. First is the impact overview. So this is I'm telling the judge what it is because I'm doing good line by line skills and I'm doing very good signposting within the debate. So not only do you have to signpost different flows, right? So like when you give your roadmap, like first I'm going to go to the DA, then I'm going to go to the cattle plan, then I'm going to go to the K, et cetera. Uh, but you do need to do signposting within the debate, right? So you're going to do first, I'm going to do the impact overview, then I'm going to do the link debate, then I'm going to do the unique debate, then I'm going to answer this or et cetera. I'm in the order of the two AC. So this is just what I like to do to keep myself reminded that um, what the order is going to be. So first, the impact overview. So here is the explanation, right? So the quick explanation of the parts of the DA, the economy is recovering. That's the uniqueness. But the plan tanks that recovery. This is the link that causes an uncontrollable economic downturn and crushes the global economy. That's our Bosia evidence. OK, so we want to make sure that we're citing our evidence here. I prefer this evidence. It's like the peers and extensive studies that indicate that high depth and fast spending crushes the economy. OK, so this is the reason why our impact evidence is better than any of the AF impact evidence. And our royal evidence indicates that economic decline causes global war through the redistribution of power, regional instability and an increased intervention through the rally around the flying effect. OK, so and then great. That's the quick explanation of our impact. And then we're doing now we're going to do our impact out here. So we have way on magnitude because the economy controls funding for war means we turn their impacts because and they can't turn theirs. Right. So um, war can happen in a world. Uh, war can only happen in a world economic collapse. But if there's no economic collapse, then it makes war less likely. Right. Also, an economic collapse will cause all the conflicts by exacerbating regional com uh, regional conflicts. We have way on time frame because of the interconnectedness of the global economy. If the U.S. economy collapsed overnight, all other economies would go down, inciting immediate conflict as each country tries to stay on the top. We control a larger motivation for countries to go to war with economic collapse. And we have way on probability. Royal indicates best studies. Oops. And empirics flow negative. OK, so this is the um, impact calc and here's turns, right? We turn all the F impacts. Economic collapse causes all their impacts to happen and the DA turns case. Bad economy means the app won't get continual funding from Congress and also private investors will invest. So the app gets rolled back and we turn the impacts to advantage one, which are right. So what I like to do when I'm prepping a file, especially if you're a novice, is I like to remind myself what I need to insert. Right. So obviously it's not going to be the same for every app, like because the apps have different advantages. The turns case analysis is going to be different for each app. So what I like to do is I like to remind myself that I need to insert some some analysis specific to the app. And what I like to do is I like to highlight it in a different color and I bracket it off. So when I'm prepping for the speech, Let's say I'm prepping for the one and R, then I'll know to turn to um, do this, right? So, for example, let's say I'm going to make the one and R speech, and we're going to do this over the course of this video. One and R practice. Oops, you can tell I'm not very good at typing. I'm going to make a one and R speech doc. I'm just going to save it here, but you should always save it in something specific. I'm um, going to send this impact overview over there. Oops, and it lets me choose. Well, I'm going to want to send it to one and R practice. Um, so, oops, okay. When this happens, when you have to choose a speech shock, you actually have to hit the tilde key twice at once after you select it. Then, so, okay, so I'm like prepping for the one and R that I need to do this. Okay, so like let's say advantage uh, one was a warming advantage. So I say we turn the impacts advantage one, which are global warming, because explain how economic collapse causes those impacts to happen. So we just talked about this, right? Because in a world of economic collapse, 
investors are less likely to invest in green technologies that are better to fight against greenhouse gas emissions, right? And then we turn the advantage of we turn the effects of advantage two, which are so like let's say advantage two was an econ event was no not an econ advantage was uh was a hedge advantage, which are which is hegemony because. In bad economic times, we can't fund the military, which hurts our ability to project power over seas. Okay, so here's a question. Now, why did I not just write this analysis in the actual spending DA? Well, obviously, because this is going to change round to round, we don't want to have stuff in there that is specific to one particular round because we might forget to not change it. And then we like sound really dumb because we're doing analysis on not the actual round that we're in. So I like to do all that analysis. I like to remind myself about it in the actual doc, like in the actual DA file. And then when I'm working on my actual document for the particular round, that's where I like to customize it to each round. Okay. Now, also in this impact overview, I've got a couple cards, right? So link alone turns a DA. So this argument means that um, when we're, when countries are perceived as, uh, wait, what is this card saying? Oh, okay. It says that when we don't have a good economy, then it causes things to get um, rolled back because it means that we can't fund projects like the app. Okay. So I like to put a little trick here. All right. So let's go back. Now that we talked about the impact overview uh, and move on. So here's a turns case analysis. So we're going to talk about the turns case section. So sometimes it's helpful to have a section of the file which uh, with turns case cards. So these are reasons why your impact turns potential app impact. So let's take a look at it. Okay. So here's the spending DA. And here is turns case. Okay. So the terminal impact of the spending DA is economy. So here's a bunch of cards that says that why economy turns various impacts, right? So turns Iran, North Korea, right? So um, economic collapse spurs isolationism. It sparks rogue proliferation by Iran and North Korea and conflict between Russia, China, and Indo-Pak war. So this just says the economic collapse causes their impacts, which is Iran or North Korea, to happen. Okay. Here's one, another one. Biodiversity growth solves biodiversity. So a collapse of the economy would also collapse biodiversity, and that makes sense, right? So I like to have this huge section that just talks about how our impacts turn all the other ones. Now, where do you get these cards? Well, sometimes it might be in the actual file. Sometimes you need to go to a big impact file and compile these from that, okay? So, let's move on. Next is the uniqueness well. So this is where you're, first you're gonna extend your one and C uniqueness evidence, right? Um, then you're gonna give a reason why your evidence is better, and then you're gonna have a section with more uniqueness cards, and you want a diversity of warrants. So you want the cards that you choose, not to all say the same thing, but you want them all to make a diversity of arguments within uniqueness. So what does that mean? Well, let's take a look, right? So I'm gonna go to the mechanics, and here's the uniqueness wall, okay? So I'm putting the uniqueness debate here. So again, I'm flagging where I'm, what kind of debate I'm doing, and next I'm gonna extend the one and see evidence, extend our more evidence, so if you you go back to the one and see more is the uniqueness card economy recovering because we're reducing the debt so send our more evidence the economies are covering because of the shift towards fiscal conservatism you should prefer this evidence because it's predictive of the gop senate and indicates that we're having a shift towards austerity measures which are key to maintain growth this answers all thumpers by assuming future momentum for economic growth if you're not if you don't know what a thumper is go back and watch the da's video however it's not too late to for spending to tank progress and here's more uniqueness evidence okay so look what i did i Flagged what kind of were were in the debate I was what kind of debate I was doing within the flow. Next, I extend the one C evidence here. Next, I give a reason why you should prefer the evidence. Here are some warrants within the card, and here are going to be some more cards, right? So here are more uniqueness warrants. First, econ the economy is booming, multiple warrants. So here are all the different warrants about why the economy is booming. Treasury drops, employment gains, rising payrolls, blah, 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 okay? So this card is really good because it doesn't make the same... Uh, argument as the one and see more evidence, right? Because that's talking about fiscal conservatism. These are other reasons why the economy is doing well. But now, why would you not want to read a bunch of the same cards? Well, it doesn't really matter, right? Like, if you have one good card that says that, like, you don't need to read a bunch more. What you want to do is make a bunch of arguments, because that'll make it harder for the 1AR to answer all the arguments that are all the warrants that are within those cards, right? Okay. So, let's take a look at the uniqueness wall now. We just did that. All right, link wall. So, this is the structure, right? It's kind of similar to the uniqueness wall. So first you're going to extend the 1C link evidence. 
So that's the big, first you're going to write the big idea of the link evidence, then you're going to have the author name, and then the warrants in the card, and then you're going to want one to three additional pieces of link evidence with diverse warrants. Okay, so let's take a look at the link wall now. Okay, so let's go here, and here's the link. Now, wait a minute, you're probably wondering, isn't the link going to change depending on the app? Yeah, so this is why you want to have more customization happening on the link level, because when we do the one and R, we're going to need to do that analysis, right? So here's the link wall. I'm going to do the link debate here, right? So I'm flagging what kind of debate I'm doing. Next, uh, I'm going to extend the one and see evidence, right? The plan spends a lot of money, which increases the debt and is also perceived by investors as wasteful spending, which further hurts the economy. So this is an explanation of the link. Now I'll expand the, spe the specific piece of link evidence, the plan from the one and see. That was the insert author name card. Now, why can't I just have a generic card, right? Oh, because when I look at the one and see, then you have to insert a specific link. Now, wait a minute. Where do you get those? Well, I go to my handy dandy link section and see what kind of app it is. So like, let's say the app is OTEC, okay? So link OTEC. So in the one and C, when I'm making the one and C, I would take this Friedman evidence, I'd copy and paste it into the one and C, right? So if I go back to the one and C doc I made, I would paste it in here, good. And then I would know to go off it, right? So what I wanna do is I'm gonna do the link debate. So I'm gonna hit the tilde key, okay? here. Oops. Oh, I see what I did. Okay. So one thing that's kind of silly is you want to make sure that um, on the document you're sending the evidence to, you're clicked at the end. Otherwise, I'll send it like halfway through other evidence, right? So now that I've done that, I'm going to click on this, hit the tilde key, and look, the link debate's there, okay? So now it's some specific link to the plan, the one and see. That was the, uh, let's go look at the one and see. That was the Friedman evidence. Okay. That was the... Friedman card that says that uh, I don't remember. So one thing that I like to do is I actually will copy and paste evidence from the one and see into this one and then I'll just delete it in a second after I can look at it. So I can look at what the card says and then I can write out what it says. It says that OTAC is super oops, expensive to build and could cost up to $100 million. Also, investors perceive it as a risky investment, right? And then here's another specific link card to the plan, okay? So then I wanna read another link. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the spending DA, I'm gonna go back to the link. Oh, look, here it is. Here's another link card, it's this Mario card, and then I'm gonna insert this other one. Now you're gonna have to feel out how fast you are. You might not be able to read as many pieces of specific link evidence as um, you would want just because you're like not super fast. That's totally okay. Um, you just need to be making sure that you're looking at your timer and that you make sure that you cover all of the two ACRs, okay? So this, because I added two more cards, you're probably not gonna need to read more cards on the link here. But if they, hey, if you think the two AC is really gonna press it, um, and if you think they're gonna go for no link to the spending DA, then yeah, maybe you should boost her up on the section and read more cards here, okay? So now that we understand that, we can move on. So answers to. So sometimes you can predict answers the other side will make to your argument and you can prescript answers. So if you hear the AF team make an argument that you haven't heard before, so after the round, and if you didn't know how to answer during the round, you should first ask the judge about it and then you should make a block after the round. So how do you make answers to? Well, you can you should write an analytic at the top and then you should have a card or you can just have a card. Okay, so let's go to the answers to section, okay? So what I did, what I like to do is I like to um, separate my answers to sections into uh, based on the type of argument, right? So if it's a uniqueness argument, a link argument, an internal link argument, or an impact argument, okay? So in uniqueness, here are my answers to, right? Commodities, oil kills econ, housing kills econ, etc. So within each answers to section, I have a card, okay? So, yeah, and I'm actually going to need to go through and highlight all these cards, but you can go through and see how each answer to section is. Some people like to have all their answers to in like one big section, but I like to split it up because it's easier for me to quickly identify whether each 2AC argument is a uh, uniqueness argument, a link argument, internal link argument, or an impact argument, and then I can easily go there, right? Because let's say the first 2AC argument is no uniqueness, then what I'll do is I'll grab my uniqueness wall, I'll put that there, right? So I'm gonna put the uniqueness debate here, extend my offense, my uniqueness, and then I'll answer their specific arg. So, so for example, I'm gonna send this uniqueness to the one in our speech doc, okay? Oh, no, 
Hang on, I always forget to click at the end. Um, I'm going to send this to the 1 and R. Okay, so I'm going to the end. I'm sending this to the 1 and R. And then, let's say that their specific argument was housing kills the economy, so alternative causes. Then I'm going to go to this and then send that there. So if I was giving the 1 and R, I would extend my uniqueness stuff first, and then I would be like, I'm going to answer their specific, their answer uniqueness arguments, right? Just like I prompted here, right? And then that's where this is right now.